Okay, so a lot of you are always asking me for my seven step framework for writing compelling leads. So I thought I'd give it to you. But for you guys watching this, if you're a business that's running 2K plus offers, online business, and you've got a good back end, this is probably the video for you. If not, disclaimer, probably isn't for you. Okay, so let's get into the first seven steps of writing compelling leads. Okay, step number one, grab the reader by the eyeballs, okay? So how do you do this? Well, number one, you flag your ideal prospect. And you do this as well by stoking curiosity and providing a big compelling benefit. Let me show you. Okay, so the read of this promotion is people are interest in, interested in financial opportunity. So the next great Caribbean beachfront opportunity is in a place nobody's paying attention to yet. Number one is stoking curiosity. What objection of, why haven't I heard about this, right? So that's the first objection that's covered in a logical order. Number two, again, it's stoking curiosity, like, well, this is some secret or something. Number three, it provides a big compelling benefit, but not just a benefit, it's also a hidden benefit, right? Because the reader of this promotion wants to invest in real estate to grow their retirement savings, but at the same time, they also want to live in quote unquote paradise, right? Which again, that's what it's providing as well. Step number two, can we make this nice and quick? Is reinforce and expand on your headline. Why? Because you can't go from one idea to a completely unrelated idea, right? You want to reinforce the benefit when you do this and you want to stoke curiosity. Here's how we do it. Okay, so boom, there we go. Expanding on the head, oops. Expanding on the headline. In the headline it said Caribbean beachfront opportunity. Now it's saying again, Caribbean beachfront, exact same words, right? And it goes on, and that's just for starters, right? So it gets you to read the rest of the sales message. Now, whenever you want to stoke curiosity, you teach or you tell the what and the why, the importance, but you don't reveal the how, not just yet, right? So that's step number two. Step number three is the big promise. Now, whenever I teach our private clients this, I tell them all the time, you need a big compelling promise. And the reason why is because it is. If you can't give someone a big compelling promise, you can't hook them in, right? And that's the importance of copy because as you should see, whenever you make a big compelling promise, especially in today's market, as you probably know, people's BS detectors are so finely tuned and I'm completely against like high P sales tactics. I think they're awful, it's bad relationship building with people it's just not a good tactic especially not in today's day and age anyway the importance of the big promise is it relates to that formula you can see on your screen now which i'll explain in a minute i've got to keep your attention right um so anyway yeah that's that and whenever i teach clients this right i get them to think of it like this i was like think of it like oxygen so one day i was actually having an anxiety attack because when i was a lot younger I used to suffer from a lot of anxiety attacks. And one day, this person came to my house and threw a brick in my window. I wasn't there, but it affected me for a very, very long time. And eventually one day, again, someone, I think it was the postman, they just came to the door, knocked on the door, and there I was playing my PlayStation or something. And then I started crawling. I saw the blinds. I peeked over. I was like, oh, shit, someone's coming to rob me. So I started crawling on the ground like you do, like, you know, you see in the movies in World War II in the trenches. I started crawling so you couldn't see me. I ran up three flights of stairs, hid in the cupboard, called my dad. He rushed. He just went through red lights and everything, right? And during the process, when I, while I was on the call to him, I was like, Dad, and I, I ran out of breath, right? I couldn't say anything. Why? Because I had anxiety attack because uh, my brain wasn't getting enough oxygen, right? My, my body wasn't getting the oxygen it needs. And that's the exact same in copy. Copy is the oxygen to your business, right? Like if you think of um, the fastest runner in the world, for example, he's nothing. He could have the best heart. He could be the most athletic, but if he hasn't got oxygen, he can't communicate his message. The, the same thing goes in copy, right? You can have the best offer, but if you can't communicate your message properly, if you can't connect, Kaput. Right, number four. Establish credibility. 
right? This is important. Why? Because whenever you do a promotion, everyone, especially in this day and age, they always want to, they need to trust you. And the first objection is always, who are you? Are you qualified to teach me this? So you, that's why you always want to establish credibility. And I'm not even going to bother showing you here. It's pretty simple. If you look in any sales letter, they always say, hey, my name is da 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 I've appeared on CNBC, uh, Harvard University, and on and on and on. So you build authority. Now, here's, here's where I want you to listen. Here's the kick, right? Here's where it matters. Here's the formula, UMP, UM, UMS. Now, whenever you write copy, like I said, copy is real important as how you communicate your message and how you connect, right? But copy is not what a lot of people think. I want you to look at it a different way. Copy is not writing. It's not really a lot of writing and it's not even salesmanship in print as a lot of people would say. I say it's something else. I say it's more about psychology. If you read or know any good copywriters, let me tell you something. They study more psychology than these textbooks right here. These bad boys, they're great. They got some timeless principles. Don't get me wrong, I love them. But <laughs> especially in this day and age, the persuasion principles, the psychological principles are very important. Well, they've always been the timeless principles, but you need to know the psychology and what's going on. And that is why you need to know number five. Again, it's not about writing. You don't need to do any more sales, sleazy sales tactics because first of all, they don't work. But anyway, number five, unique mechanism problem. Why do you want to identify a unique mechanism problem? Well, it's simple. Whenever someone's had a bad experience, right, you need to prevent a new and different solution because they've, they now have a belief that that doesn't work. So it needs to be new, all right? Uh, okay, so here's how they do it. If you'd argue that political uncertainty abounds, the unique mechanism problem, the problem is there's a lot of uncertainty, right? The solution and an easy way to overcome objections is just to reframe. You just say, for example, if someone gives you an objection saying, I can't do this and this and this, I haven't got time to go to the gym, then you just reframe it, right? And this is how they do it. I say that because the turmoil and uncertainty we all see generates opportunity see that reframe most people overlook why does it say most people overlook well first of all it links back to the sub headline remember it's an opportunity nobody is paying attention to yet see that okay secondly it communicates that it's new it's an underlying structure that you can't see in the words but it's communicating that it's new it needs to be new and different yeah, but that's that's not you probably heard this a lot anyway you'll see when we get to number six it's something not a lot of people talk about okay so that's the unique mechanism solution and whenever you write copy that you don't want to sound like a hypey salesman which i highly advise you don't want to sound like you want to do this you want to commit connect your customer's problem story with your solution product story i'll talk about this in one of my books i'm not going to pitch you here but yeah anyway Okay, so number six, once you've identified a mechanism problem, the unique mechanism solution, you want a driver. Here's why. In my book, the unpublished chapters, which is the advanced version of the forbidden seek of copywriting, I explain it like this. I said, look, you have a car, there's four tires. First tire is the unique mechanism problem, unique mechanism solution, the forbidden secret, which I'll cover in a second, and then unique mechanism. But you can have the Lambo, you can have the Rolls Royce, you can have the best car in the world. If you don't have a driver to get the vehicle to the destination, which the prospect needs to be at after, their after stay, then it's useless. You need a driver. Now, the driver, in this case, and as, a, as an example, is this. Okay, there's one promotion I broke down the other day. Think of the driver. You can think of the driver as a car analogy, like I just explained, or... Think of a driver like this. The unique mechanism problem and the unique mechanism solution, just the unique mechanism entirety as a one concept, is a door, right? This is a door. Now, the driver is a key. So you need a key to open the door, right? Uh, well, I don't know why I did that. It opens like that. <laughs> but anyway, so the key allows the door to open. Why do you need the key? You need a key because prospects like i said before once they've had a bad experience they believe it's not possible anymore right so you need a new key 
For example, there was a promotion the other day that I broke down. The unique mechanism was called the Genesis Investing System, right? The driver was a new law that was passed by Congress. It's what allows it. It opens the prospect's mind. And whenever you do this, you want to create an underliable logical reasoning. It's undeniable, right? How do you do that? You use fate. You put stuff outside of people's control so they can log logically justify it to themselves, right? So that's the, uh, step number six. Step number seven, the last one. The forbidden secret. Now, here's why, oops, that's not where we want to be. Here's why the forbidden secret is important, okay? The forbidden secret starts from the headline all the way to the end of the offer. Without the forbidden secret, and here's the importance, it's, it maintains, it's like, um, it's like a tectonic plate that runs through the earth. That's what the forbidden secret is. It maintains everything. And without belief, which is kind of linked to the forbidden secret, your prospect won't buy it, right? So those are the seven steps. If you'd like some more help, um, I've got a book on this. You can just go to daynightonbook.com, type it in your search engine. You can find it there. Share it with your friend if you think it's been useful. And yeah, until next time, take it easy.